May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be righteous in your sight, O Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We enter into the world spiritually dead and blind. This is how the flesh is without regeneration, without recreation in Christ. It is in the waters of baptism that we are made new, a new creation in Christ. Given the faith to see, to know our Lord and His gospel call, to call the call to salvation in Him. Please be seated. Our gospel text begins this day. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man, Nicodemus, is a representative of the nation of Israel at the time of Jesus' teaching and life. He believes that he is a righteous man before God. As a Jew, he was taught, and so he believes, and so he teaches, that the righteousness of Abram belongs to him. Abram was righteous, and that is very true. We, we heard Paul speak of it in the text from Romans. We heard of what Abram did in the Genesis reading. But it's not his righteousness to give or bestow or imbue to anybody else. Nicodemus also believes that he's saved by the works that he has done. That by the keeping of the law and the commands and the statutes that were passed down by Moses and made clear in the teachings of the Pharisees, he is righteous. As a Pharisee, he is truly a man who is self-made in righteousness. He's built an entire mountain of works upon which he stands, his keeping of the law, on which he believes that he can stand on that mountain of his works before God and say, I am good, I am worthy, I am saved. This is why Paul writes, what then shall we say was gained by Abraham our forefather according to the flesh? Abram's works are not the kind that were done expecting a reward. They were obedience to God, yes, but done by Abraham's trust in God's promise. There's a difference between works done simply by obedience and faith, which then brings about works. The Lord made certain promises to Abram, and Abram trusted those promises trusted the word that he had been given, even to the point where he would take his son up upon the mountain and offer to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. And the trust that Abram had in the Lord's word was counted by the Lord as righteousness to Abram. The obedience demonstrated came out of the trust which the Lord had instilled in him. From where does our trust in the Lord come? This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one else can do these signs unless God is with him. In the text, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. This, there's an argument that can be made that he comes under the cover of darkness so that no one can see him. He comes like, a, like an illicit lover, so that no one would see what he is doing and accuse him of colluding with Jesus. He may come only when the moon provides light, so that his image is not sullied or stained. Yet, in the Gospel according to St. John, in this text that we've read, and in all of John's Gospel, there's more at play than what can be blindly read from the surface. Light and dark take on a significant role in John's Gospel. Certainly, darkness is a time when things are not easily seen. But here, Nicodemus is in the dark about Jesus. He's searching for the light. A blind man feeling his way around the room 
looking for a thing which he is missing. He knows it's there, but he knows not what it is or where to find it. Nicodemus is spiritually blind. All his faith is set upon the works of his own hands, relying only on the righteousness of Abraham and Nicodemus' own keeping of the law. It is works for the sake of the law. There's no trust in the Lord to fulfill his promise. There is only the man terrified of the Lord, doing whatever he can to please the Lord and appease his own guilt. There's no understanding of the promise, no faith in the Lord. Nicodemus, like those in his generation, are without the promise of regeneration, recreation, and so are blind to who Jesus is and what he has done for us. Flesh alone is blind to the gospel. Flesh alone cannot see what's been given. Flesh desires to live in the moment, to fill its belly, to live from day to day. It is blind to the workings of the Spirit, and it is blind to the promise that the Spirit brings. The Spirit, though, lives for eternity. The Spirit drags the flesh around like an unwilling animal out of its darkness and into the light of day out of the darkness of death and into the light of Christ. The Spirit helps the flesh to then see and guides the flesh to the newness of life that comes through that Spirit. The Spirit is needed. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? See, the flesh only sees the flesh. The flesh is blind. The flesh cannot see the ways of the Lord. Here the Lord has clearly spoken of a second birth, a second time of water and coming into the world. Yet all Nicodemus can see is flesh. And so all he can see is birth by the flesh. If one is to be born again, then one must have to crawl back into his mother's womb a second time to come out. And this cannot be. It looks silly. It sounds silly. The spiritually blind cannot see because they are in darkness. But Jesus answers Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Water and Spirit. It is the Spirit which brings life. It is the Spirit which brings light and lets us see. It is the Spirit which regenerates, recreates, makes, us, makes in us a new heart and a right spirit within us. Notice I said recreate, not renew, not restore, but regenerate, recreate, make new. Our first birth is from our earthly mother. It's a, a birth of water and flesh. The second birth from the font is water and spirit. Just as the first is accomplished without the presence, with, I'm sorry, without our presence, what did this guy write here? This doesn't make any sense. Just as the first birth is accomplished with only our presence and without our participation, so also at the font the Lord bestows upon us His righteousness. And it is done by our presence, but not by our participation. He gives us faith to open our eyes, our blind eyes, and makes us aware of the promises that He gives to us in His Word so that our obedience and our works come not from ourselves, not from our flesh, but from His Spirit working against our flesh, working inside our hearts and our minds to draw us closer to Him. Many out there in American Christianity love to point out the day on which they were born again. 
They love to say and proclaim that day upon which they accepted Jesus into their hearts. That they made themselves one with Christ. That their works like Nicodemus' works are the mountain upon which they can stand, saying, on this day I said. They love to speak of this work they've done. Like Nicodemus grasping in his blind obedience the works of his hands. They take great pride in boasting. Yet Abraham, Nicodemus, and even those who look to their works to save them have nothing to boast about before God. So Paul tells us. Our works before our Lord are not but filthy rags. I was born again, and on this I will brag. I will brag on this. I have no part in it. It is the assurance of God's promise. As sure as the water was placed on my head and the pastor spoke the words on October 10th, 1969. There in a font in Viroqua, Wisconsin, the pastor spoke the name of the Lord, washed my head with water, and the Lord made me his own child. By water, by spirit, I gladly say. There is he did for you on that day for you. The Lord opened my eyes and the light was seen and Christ's righteousness was imputed to you on that day. You were made His. You were regenerated, recreated, born again in Christ, a second birth. Your flesh was given a guide, a light, and a teacher. Faith you were given by water and by word. It is in the waters of baptism that you were made new. A new creation in Christ, given the faith to see and to know our Lord and His gospel call. The call to salvation in Him alone. Of this you can boast, even before the Lord. For it was given to you for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.